Hi guys, Harry here, and with David Tennant confirmed to be the 14th Doctor, of course a lot of people have assumed that this regeneration from Jodie Whittaker to David Tennant was forced in some sort of way. However, what if I told you that the regeneration from Jodie Whittaker to David Tennant could make perfect sense? But before we get into the video, don't forget to subscribe, also leave a like and comment down below, and let's get in to the video. So, everything you know about why the Doctor's regenerated is a lie. And for that to be seen, we need to go back to the 8th Doctor's regeneration into the War Doctor's regeneration. And I'm starting off here rather than the first Doctor's regeneration to the second because of two major plot points. Of course, the first one is the Time War that the Doctor has been trying to run away from. And then in the uh, Night of the Doctor special, um, we saw Paul McGann's Eighth Doctor finally after the death of a young woman, Cass, he finally decided that he had to play his part in the Time War and regenerate into a warrior. And the second point that helped that was that this regeneration took place on Khan. And Khan is a place where Time Lord regeneration can be forced into whatever they, the, well, the Time Lord or even the Sisterhood of Khan want the Time Lord to become. And the Eighth Doctor says that he needs to become a warrior uh, to take part in the Time War. And the Doctor became exactly this. He became a warrior, he took part in the Time War, he became the War Doctor. He didn't even think himself as the Doctor, he just saw himself as a warrior. And even though the Eighth Doctor already had his regeneration forced um, by the fact that he died in a plane crash, um, he regenerated because he was he thought to himself, well, he needed to take place in the Time War and he regenerated into a warrior. And the same thing happens with the War Doctor regenerating into the Ninth Doctor, apart from it's the other way around. This time it's a warrior regenerating into a Doctor. And this is seen a lot, because the War Doctor, when we saw him regenerate at the end of Day of the Doctor, he didn't really have anything that made him like actually regenerate. It didn't seem like he sustained a regeneration injury. It just seemed that his time was up. The time war was over, the doctor had stopped everything, but he decided to regenerate into the ninth doctor. He decided that he had kind of fulfilled himself as the doctor again. He had decided to save Gallifrey instead of killing it, and he regenerated to become the doctor again. He felt like he had kind of redeemed himself, and even though 9 and 10 and most of 11 didn't remember that, he had enough memory of that time to regenerate into the doctor again. And that was the only reason the war doctor regenerated. He fought he had saved a load of lives, his own home planet, so that was the reason he really regenerated. And now we go back to the beginning, the first time the Doctor regenerated, which was of course the first Doctor to the second Doctor. And the real reason the first Doctor regenerated is for something that you probably wouldn't know in the modern era. Of course, the first Doctor is a lot different to all the other Doctors. When we first see him, he's brash, he's abrasive, he doesn't care about humans, he just wants to investigate by himself. It leads him into trouble many times, and he never takes responsibility for his own actions. However, the first and the second Doctor are almost polar opposites when you look at them. The second Doctor is a lot more friendly, he takes the time to comfort his companions, even people that he has just met in that story arc, and he is a lot more friendly. This is why the first Doctor regenerates into the second Doctor, to become more friendly. And it's even shown more in Twice Upon a Time, when the first Doctor is worrying about how he has spent his life. And this, I think, is what makes the change from first to second, of course, more about his personality rather than him sustaining an injury causing him to regenerate. He becomes a lot more friendly and that is really the real reason why first regenerates into second. 
However, of course, the second Doctor wasn't without his flaws either. And this second Doctor regeneration to the third Doctor regeneration marks a much more humanoid mark in the Doctor's life. Of course, he was forced into this regeneration by the Time Lords for interfering in time and, of course, breaking the Time Lord oath. And he was forced onto Earth into exile and his TARDIS didn't work so he couldn't fly away from Earth. And also he, well, he had to stay on, on Earth. He couldn't go into any other planets, not even to the moon. He was stuck on Earth. And this really makes it a more humanoid change because the second Doctor really doesn't want to be stranded on Earth. He thinks that is beneath him. No! You can't do this to me! No! 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 However, the third Doctor grows his time on Earth and he becomes a much better Time Lord and even much more human. We see throughout the Third Doctor's era that he becomes much more friendly and much more human and this is the change from the Second to the Third Doctor. I mean it's even shown in the time that he doesn't have his TARDIS. However, even when he gets his TARDIS back and working again, he is still human. He still goes and helps Unit out on Earth. He still cares about the Earth more. And this change from Second to Third, it was because the Second Doctor, uh, well, once he had become the third Doctor, really wanted to become more human. And that is the real change. However, of course, the third Doctor wasn't fully um, integrated into human society. He was still mostly in the unit base, and this made it not entirely possible for him to be, well, as human as the humans, of course, uh, but this changed a bit with the fourth Doctor. Of course, the fourth Doctor was a bit more weird and wacky and he had his TARDIS working so he could go on adventures, but I think the real, um, well, the real thing with the fourth Doctor is the people he had around him. Even though he had robot dogs and Time Lords himself, he also had human companions. And in the Fourth Doctor era, he started to care about his companions more and more. It wasn't like in the time of the First Doctor, where he didn't care about Ian and Barbara, or even in the time of the Second Doctor, where he kind of let Jamie and Victoria's minds be wiped. And even in the Third Doctor's era, he was kind of just move from one companion to another. But in this one, I mean, his companions are a lot closer to him. He cares about them a lot. And this is shown mostly, of course, in his regeneration. He dies with his companions by his side, really mourning his loss. And of course, he takes the time, even though he's dying, to comfort them, saying that this regeneration has been prepared for. And it really shows that he cares about his companions in his time as the fourth Doctor. And from the fourth Doctor's regeneration into the fifth Doctor, again, it is another kind of regeneration change to get closer to the companions. But this time he gets a bit younger. This time he can relate with them more on a personal level. He is around the same kind of age as his companions, although it's very clear that he is in control, that they can come to him for help. However, in the fifth Doctor, um, well, in the fifth Doctor's body, he is a lot more approachable to his companions and even people that he just meets through that story arc. He is a lot more warm and caring than the previous Doctors and this is shown a lot in his regeneration. It isn't the fact that the fourth Doctor sustained an injury causing him to regenerate. It's because he needed to be more warm. He cared about his companions more to get closer and comfort them more. I don't really have anything for the fifth to the sixth Doctor because it's kind of like he regressed a little unfortunately um, but six to seven is a well remarkable change really. Of course in the sixth and seventh Doctor it's clear that the seventh Doctor is closer to his companions. Of course he has a more Machiavellian manipulative nature. However, the Sixth Doctor was, well, well, was outright violent. And this marked a change in the Seventh Doctor's era, becoming less violent. And he decided to be a bit more restrained with how 
coming. He was violent. Again, it cropped up in the eras, but throughout going to the end of his eras, it is clear through his relationship with Ace that it is clear that he has become less violent than he was in his sixth incarnation. And then we go into the modern era with the Ninth Doctor's regeneration into the Tenth Doctor. And of course, David Tennant's Tenth Doctor has been described as the more human and more friendly Doctor. He is seen as the most human Doctor. Mostly this is Nine's attempts that he likes Rose more, which is why he regenerates into Ten, but it's also to become closer to his companions because Ten kind of well, he respects Mickey at the end of Mickey's arc. He again sees how he treat, well, how he treated Martha badly. He, well, he become best friends with Donna. He literally cried himself when he had to wipe Donna's mind. And he cares about Rose, you can see, through his whole time as the Doctor. And he cares about all the people he come across. He cares about River Song, obviously. Just doing anything he can to save her. And, of course... This is why the 10th Doctor regenerated into the 9th. Coming back off the Time War and learning to become the Doctor again before he could become human as well. But of course the 10th Doctor had a way to go in being human and that came in the form of his next regeneration, of course his 11th incarnation. And this was really the one where we saw him being considerate to all people, again mostly his companions. But we saw how badly he treated Mickey and Martha at the start when he first saw them and of course this is totally different in the 11th Doctor's era. Of course, he makes fun of Rory a bit at the start, but of course, it's just a light poke at him, just making a little bit of fun. And of course, he respects Rory enough that Rory kind of stands up to the Doctor for what he wants, and he sees how much that Rory cares for Amy. And of course, the 11th Doctor is heartbroken when it is revealed he has been away for 12 years from Amy, and also he's also shocked when it reveals that he has been another two years from when he last saw Amy again. And... He cares about Amy a lot more. You can see that. And even when Amy and Rory die, you can see with his relationship with Clara, it is a lot of fun and that, well, he cares about his companions and also the random people he just meets. Like um, River Song, obviously, he gets closer to, even finding out that she was the woman who kills him. And, of course, just getting closer with, like, Vincent van Gogh and, of course, Craig from the episode The Lodger. He just gets a lot more close and considerate to everyone. And this brings me to the 12th Doctor. Now you could be thinking, well the 12th Doctor is another Doctor to regress, like the 6th Doctor. And I say that is entirely wrong. The 12th Doctor gives his companions something to connect to him more than just being their friend and him being more considerate to people. This gives the companions something to be invested in. This is shown across Clara and Bill, where they, well, where they kind of more combatant with the Doctor. Don't you dare look me in with the rest of all the little humans that you think are so tiny and silly and predictable. But this is to bring them together. This is to care about them. Because I can say that with absolute certainty, maybe the biggest, well, friendship, um, between a Doctor and their companion is the ending of Twelve um, and Clara. Of course, Clara leaves the TARDIS a lot in the Twelve Doctor's era, but she keeps coming back. This is because Twelve has built a connection where they both need each other. They're kind of like both different sides of the same coin and they need each other. That's why it was kind of revealed they were the hybrid. Um, it's not 100% sure. It was implied it was them. And it's shown with Bill too, because Bill, even though she's converted into a Cyberman, she brings the Doctor back to his TARDIS where he can regenerate safely. And it just shows, well, shows so much to their friendship. And of course, this is shown most in the 12th Doctor. He literally upturns Gallifrey and breaks every rule in the book to save Clara's life. And even though he doesn't succeed, he wipes his memory because he can't bring himself to wipe Clara's memory of him just so she'll be safe. I know we sat together in the cloisters 
She told me something very important, but I have no idea what she said. Or what she looked like. Or how she talked. Or laughed. There's nothing there. However, he gets his memories back just before his regeneration. And it's the same with Bill. His regeneration story is probably the most heartfelt in terms of companions. All the companions from his era are there. And just before he regenerates in The Doctor Falls, um, of course, there is a lot of his companions. He sees all his companions from the, well, from New Who era, from Rose all the way to Bill, and even Missy the Master makes an appearance, forcing him to get up and start his regeneration story, showing how much it would mean to his companions if he just decided to die. And then we move on to the 13th Doctor, and this is, of course, seen as the 13th Doctor is kind of the polar opposite of 12. 12 said, you must be kind, and 13 was a more bubbly, more friendly, more humanoid, more nice, and more importantly, kind Doctor. She always tried to be kind, and she gave people second chances even when they didn't deserve it. She tried not to kill if it unless it was absolutely absolutely necessary and it is seen in this as she cares about everyone she comes across and it is shown just throughout the way she carries herself that she cares. So you might be thinking well how does that happen that the 13th Doctor regenerates into David Tennant again? And I think we will see a more morally ambiguous 14th Doctor. I think he will be darker, he will be a bit more calculating, he will be a bit more manipulative. And I think this would be a great way to differentiate this, of course, from his 10th incarnation. Of course, this was... The 10th incarnation was probably seen as to most people as the most human-like Doctor. I would say that probably lies with maybe 11 or 13, but of course 10 is up there as a really human doctor, but I think this could bring out his dark side more, and I think this could be a really way, again, to, re well, to differentiate the 10th from the 14th doctor, and I think it could be really great to see this as a more darker, more kind of adult, maybe, themes in Doctor Who. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you think this is right, that they that the Doctor has regenerated due to the changes in their personality, rather than the injuries they have sustained? And do you think we'll get a darker 14th Doctor as well? And also, I have a really great theory coming out for you guys. I am really excited about it. But if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like, also subscribe, and share it out. And I will see you in the next one.